Hello once again. Uh, so I today I want to talk about the fast CGI specification as opposed to the CGI that I talked about before. And the first thing I want to talk about though is the uh, HTTP message. Uh, so when I was doing my research for this video, I realized that my programs for CGI actually had a little bit of an incorrect format. So if you look here for the HTTP message under the hypertext transfer protocol spec, uh, the message header needs a CRLF after each uh, line in the message header. And then you can tell that you're at the end of the message uh, uh, header and that you're going to start the message body by having um, essentially two of these, right? Because the message header will have a CRLF and then you'll have a CRLF blank uh, new line at the end. Um, what I was doing for CGI, my CGI stuff, is I was just I just had new lines. I didn't have a carriage return and a line feed at the same time. So I just wanted to correct that uh, to make sure that you knew that in order to be uh, in order to follow the standard, uh, you should have the CRLF. And the reason why I found this out was in my research, which I'll show in a little bit. Now, uh, the thing I want to talk about today is fast CGI. And the main difference between CGI and fast CGI is that uh, CGI spins up a new process for each, each uh, web request that we have, while fast CGI has long running processes. And you can, you can say how many that you want. You can say, hey, I want to have three long running processes, and they will all process these kinds of requests. And what this does for fast CGI is it, is it essentially has um, the, uh, the requests are processed kind of the same way as everything else in CGI, but it allows you to be a little bit more efficient and a little bit faster. And the reason for that is you don't have to wait for this uh, process to start up to respond to a request. The process is already started and you can just uh, the server can sen uh, just send the request to the process that's already running. And so if you have, if you're going to be processing a lot of requests all at once, um, then this will be more efficient and it'll be faster for you. However, there is a price to pay, uh, which is what we're going to look at right now. So we're going to look at um, the server configuration and so there's a few things that you'll notice that are different here. We have the fast CGI module that we are loaded into the server. Uh, we're using this .fcgi extension. Uh, it's technically not really necessary, but it's a great way, I think, to show to everyone else on your server that this is a fast CGI binary. Uh, the other thing that you have to do in configuring your server is you have to uh, you have to define ahead of time all of your endpoints. So in this case, I have a hello endpoint. Uh, I need to point to where the binary is for this endpoint. I need to say, you know, what kind of, how am I going to communicate with this endpoint? In this case, it's a socket. And I have a maximum uh, number of processes, which means that, you know, if I'm going to be doing a lot of, if this hello endpoint is going to have lots of requests uh, in a short period of time, you know, I can have more processes. So I can have um, in this case, two uh, hello processes running at the same time so we can kind of load balance these things and like have multiple, um, multiple requests handled simultaneously. So you can see like while we could add and remove endpoints in CGI by just like throwing a binary there or removing it, you can't do that in FCGI, right? You have to define all of your endpoints ahead of time, how you're going to communicate to them, and what binaries you're actually going to use. So that is kind of a price that you have to pay. You lose some of the dynamic flexibility that CGI has um, in order to gain uh, performance. So the other thing I want to show is uh, what the binary looks like. So uh, this is it. Notice that we're using this .fcgi, um, which if you go back and look at the configuration file, you can see that um, this is the binary I'm outlining for that hello uh, endpoint. Uh, we can also look at the source code for this, which is just a little C file. And uh, this is what it looks like, very simple. You notice that it's uh, a lot like the, 
uh, very much like CGI, it, with the exception of that we're including this FCGI Stud.io library. And uh, you notice that in, when we compile this thing, we compile it by linking in an FCGI library, which means that for Linux and for Windows, if you have to, um, you need to have an FCGI library. So for if you have like an Ubuntu or something, you're going to do a sudo apt install like L, uh, FCGI or something to that nature. And for each distribution of Linux, you'll have your own. And that allows you to have this FCGI accept function and a couple other functions uh, that are kind of useful. And what this does is because, because your client or your server application is a long running process, this is a process that is going to start when your server starts. And so that means that you're going to have this infinite loop essentially, right? So as long as you're accepting connections, um, then you will process that request, right? So um, a little bit different than CGI because CGI the entire process was used for any request. So you would spin up an entire version, an entire process for this whole program, and the whole program would process a request and then shut down. Well, in fast CGI, the program runs forever for as long as the server is running. And that's why you need this essentially an infinite loop that accepts, uh, that accepts requests. And then you process the request and then you loop again for another request. So that's how that works. And I wanted to show this off because I actually pulled this from this uh, GitHub uh, by uh, Jerry Vig. So this guy put together this thing very nicely and I want to um, give props to him because it was because of him that I actually noticed this CR cell, um, uh, carriage return and line feed. Right, so it was because uh, that's how I figured that out as I was doing my research and saw this. Hey, he has a carriage return and line feed and and then I took a look at the HTTP message, and it turns out that that was the proper thing to do. Uh, so, uh, so thanks to Jerry Vig for actually having a good example here. That's actually simple. And so that's about all I have to say for uh, for uh, fast CGI. You know, when should you use fast CGI? Well, probably if you have if you're processing a lot of requests and you really have to worry about efficiency and speed. Uh, the thing you have to worry about, though, is obviously your con your configuration file. You have to know all of these things ahead of time, all of your endpoints ahead of time. You lose a bunch of flexibility that you would have using just CGI. So, uh, you know, what's what's my uh, preference? My preference is actually just use CGI unless you run into uh, performance issues, right? Uh, if you start to run into performance issues, then you can use this more complicated uh, version of CGI. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.